Hey everybody, welcome back. I thought I would try something a little bit different today. Um, not necessarily in what I'm throwing, uh, although that is a, a, a new thing, a little bit different too, but uh, instead of just playing music the whole time in this video, I thought I would uh, try to have a little conversation. Um, maybe do a little explanation about what I'm doing, but also just have a little conversation uh, to go along with the video. And so uh, we'll just give this a shot and uh, see how it goes. And if it comes out well enough, you'll be hearing this. And uh, if it doesn't, uh, you'll never know any difference. So uh, anyways, uh, hopefully you'll if, if this does make it, uh, that'll make you smile. So uh, I'm going to be making uh, some, uh, uh, you might have seen a post. I did. Uh, I started working on some lidded jars. And so this is a, a, a two and a quarter pounds here. Uh, I'm going to make a lidded jar here, or at least the bottom of it. And, uh, and uh, we'll get started and, and see how things shape up here. So uh, I've already made uh, I've already made several of these, and uh, uh, here in the last few minutes, uh, just playing around with some uh, some new styles, some new shapes. Um, I'll tell you one of uh, one of my big inspirations um, uh, for doing jars. I, 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 my wife can tell you that uh, I, I have a uh, <laughs> I have a good friendship with uh, Daniel Johnston. And, and I have, uh, I'd say, an attraction to, to his work. I really am impressed by what he does. Um, I've, I've known him since high school. He was a year ahead of me in high school. And uh, I'd say his, his, uh, his work is really impressive to me and inspires me. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily aspire to copy anybody's work. Uh, but I like to take inspiration from things that I like uh, because it, uh, it gets my creative juices flowing. If I can uh, make something myself that, that I've seen uh, at least pieces of it elsewhere, it, it definitely inspires me and gets my creative juices flowing. So if, I, if I'm going to try to make something different, um, you know, I, I definitely want to... Uh, uh, I like to, to make things my own, which I think is going to happen no matter what to, no matter what I'm doing, because the way I perceive a shape and the way somebody else perceives a shape is always going to be different. Um, but I definitely take inspiration from other pe other people's work that I've seen. Uh, starting out in pottery years ago, um, they had to say in the first place that I ever worked was that uh, it's all been done before. If, if you think you have a new idea in, in pottery or probably in artwork in general it's not really new it might be new <laughs> right now it might seem new but uh, somebody's tried it before in in in, his, in the history of the world somebody has tried it before um so nothing's really new um i even thought some of my tall skinny bottles i thought well no not that this is brand new but i've never really seen anybody make these before and i I was at Joseph Sands' uh, place uh, probably a year after I started making those, and I saw these really old-looking tall bottles, and uh, and I said, "Where do these come from?" And he said, "Oh, those are old. Uh, I think they said they were German water bottles, and they were ceramic, uh, tall, skinny bottles with a little handle." And and I said, "Oh my goodness, that looks a lot like what I'm making." So uh, kind of funny, but. Uh, I guess the first thing I want to mention about what I'm making here is, is I don't start out by pulling a ton of this clay uh, out of, especially the top, because I'm going to make this try to make this really fat and round. And one of the things I'm going to try to do from this point on is not really add any more water. Um, as I'm throwing, I'm going to try to pretty much throw without adding any water, which really kind of goes against the grain of the idea of, of uh, most people making pottery. You think you got to have water. Which you do have to have some, especially for the beginning part. But I've learned and kind of taught myself that there, there comes a point when you can definitely cut back on the amount of water that you're using. <clears throat> when I was very new and making pottery, I was at that same first shop that I started at when I was 16. And there was a guy that came in and threw some... Uh, big umbrella holders they were I don't know they were like two feet tall and after he pulled the cylinder <clears throat> he threw on the outside was completely dry 
<coughs> excuse me he added some water to the inside but I, at that point in my uh, throwing ability, I thought there is no way you can throw with it being dry. You gotta have water, otherwise your hands stick. His name was Jerry Beaumont, and uh, uh, you know I was 16 at the time, and I um, never really, you know, he he didn't stay working there. He just stopped by and made some of those pieces, and then I'd thought about him several times since I've gotten uh, more advanced in my work, and I started throwing dry on a lot of pieces that I would throw kind of like this and I would think about about that time watching him make those and I thought I'd always like to get in touch with him and let him know that uh, that's what I do now and I just happened a few months ago to, to run across him um, and uh, I got a chance to tell him who I was and he remembered me and got a chance to tell him that uh, that story so that was really cool on my part just getting a chance to tell him that story and uh, kind of tell him about the advance in, in my skill and my throwing and, and what I've learned just from watching him all those years ago and realizing eventually that it was possible and uh, what benefit it would have in, uh, in my work and my throwing. So you can see I've taken that clay that was you know, only a few inches wide here and made it, made it very wide here at the, at the top portion of that. Um, just from pushing out from the inside and, and gradually pushing out shaping that um, and a lot of times I do that going down like this instead of up because you're working with gravity it puts less strain on the bottom and um, make my top here and I'll measure this later and, and uh, I'll throw a few I'll throw all my lids at the same time here for these different jars that I've made I'll add a little couple lines in this top rim here to add some character and a little place for the glaze to break as well. I don't know what kind of glaze I put on this. So there we go. There's uh, one of my new style little jars I'm making. I said new, new style to me. Definitely not a new style in general. And uh, I'm going to use my little twisted uh, wire here as well to cut underneath and make a little thumbprint on the bottom. And so, uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed our little conversation and the demonstration. And uh, uh, next show I have is coming up. It's the Potter's Market Invitational in Charlotte, September 12th. So uh, if you happen to be in the area, uh, come see me and uh, all the other potters there. And... Uh, uh, if I haven't met you before, we'll get a chance to meet and uh, check out some of my new work. So we'll see you then. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you don't mind, if you're seeing this on Facebook, uh, share it, like it. And uh, if you're seeing it on YouTube, you're welcome to share it and like it as uh, as well. There, that helps get the word out and uh, and uh, spread uh, spread the word and help me uh, uh, in the evolution of my career and my work here. So anyway, y'all have a great day. Thanks. Bye.